Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Let's dive in. This week's story is called The Curse of the Gay Best Friend. I hope you enjoy. It was a chilly Friday, just after New Year's, and the snow had just barely stopped. Dressed in army fatigues with his hair buzzed short, Stefan Kohler took his suitcase out to the car. Today was the day Stefan left for basic training. He was an army man now. It was probably the last time I could talk to him, at least until after basic training. We'd been friends on and off for years. He was my first crush. A person never gets over their first love. I wasn't his, though. That honor belonged to Stephanie in middle school science. I'm Kyle Delt, five foot ten, blue eyes that turn green with the right light, light brown hair that I should cut more often but I don't have the time, and a tattoo of a bat on my left shoulder that my mom hates. I also wear glasses. I'm nearsighted. Stefan became the basketball jock in high school and played a little in college. Me? I was never good at sports. I'm a comic book geek. Stefan and I went in completely different directions. My family lived two doors down from his home. I endured the cold weather, walked out of my house, and over to where he stood by their family car. His mom, Isabella Kohler, took pictures. Stefan was in the army now. I still couldn't believe it. He'd be gone for years, seldom coming home. This might be the last time for a long, long time that I'd see him. Things might have gotten weird between us, but I could see him off and wish him well. We had been good friends once, until I ruined it. A single parent family, Stefan's dad had divorced his family a decade ago and started a new family in another state. It was only Stefan and his mom. Why don't you let me snap a few pictures of you, I said, walking through the crisp snow. Isabella handed me the phone and stood by her son, trying to look happy, but she had a tissue that she dabbed at her eyes every few seconds. I took a few pictures, then handed the phone back. Good luck, Stefan, I said. Ever since I told Stefan I was gay, there's always been kind of a, a barrier between us. He said that my being gay was okay, and he didn't mind, but we seldom hung out after I told him. Stefan always came up with an excuse, like he had a game or a practice or something going on. He went with his sports friends. I went with my comic book ones. We lived in two completely different worlds, but that never stopped me from loving him. Thanks, Stefan said, looking down a moment. We had good times together. Maybe I'll see you when I get back, right? Sure, I said, though I doubt we would. Wherever they send you, be careful. Give me your phones, Isabella said. She took several pictures of Stefan and me next to the car. A few minutes later, they drove off. I couldn't believe he was gone. Stefan and I had gone our different ways, but part of me still loved him. That first crush you never forget, I never forgot. I walked through the snow back to my front door, pretending not to see Mom pursing her lips and folding her arms. Nearly ten days later, we had another good-sized snowstorm. I was supposed to go to college that day, but the news reported about all the slowdowns and traffic problems and some school closures. The university remained open. Isabella left for work, her driveway covered in six inches of powder. I didn't have anything else to do, so I shoveled my driveway, then hers. It stopped snowing about noon, and I touched up our driveway and theirs, and went inside to check on the latest issues of comics. I liked solo characters the best. Group books like The Galactic Seven didn't delve into the characters as much as I liked. Our kitchen and dining room jutted out, and the dining room had a large panorama window that let me see Stefan's house. I was getting something to snack on when Isabella pulled into her driveway. She was talking on the phone and didn't realize that her driveway had no snow. She went to the door, unlocked it, then back to her car for groceries. She paused, mouth open a little, and smiled. 
She turned to the neighbor's house across the street. An elderly couple named Whitaker owned it. Mr. Whitaker always did little things like shoveling driveways for his neighbors. Good. She thought it was him. I pulled up my online textbook and did some studying before I had to go to work. I'm a mall janitor. Boring stuff. But the big comic book store was on the second level, and whenever I had a break, that's where I was. It didn't hurt that I also got a mall employee discount. It snowed again a few days later, on a Saturday. Isabella left, dressed for a party. I wouldn't meet my friends until later, so I quickly shoveled both our driveway and the Kohler's. I know it seems weird, and maybe a little psycho, but I imagine Stefan and me shoveling snow together, like we used to, years ago. I miss what we had. I made sure I was gone all evening, and past midnight so no one would suspect it was me. We ran into a cold, dry spell until the end of January. No snow, but arctic temperatures. It ended with a major blizzard and a good ten inches of snow everywhere. I waited until Isabella left, then shoveled our driveway and hers. The snow was thicker and wetter and heavier. It took an hour and my back ached. Stefan never knew it, but I had been to most of his home games and many of his away games too. Mom pushed me into a social life sometimes. I dated, though it didn't go anywhere. My friends and I hung out pretty often, and work could always use another hand when I needed to avoid Mom. Early February, it stopped snowing and it sort of rained or slushed. If anything fell that required a shovel, it only took minutes to deal with. It became a game. What could I do for Stefan and his mom without them ever knowing it was me? Their mailbox was always loose, so I tightened it. I threw down an early season fertilizer so their lawns would be very green this summer. Sometimes, if mom made cookies or something, I'd sneak a few extra and put them on Isabella's doorstep. Mom never suspected and yelled at me for eating so many. You'll get fat and you'll never get a date. I didn't need to worry about that. I worked off a million calories each night at work. Some people would think I was being creepy, but I told myself that Isabella was alone now and I was simply helping her. The truth is, I missed Stefan. I missed the way we had been friends. I missed the way we could talk about anything. It had been nice having a friend almost next door. We went to movies, the park, the mall. We went everywhere until I told him I loved him. Early May, the lawns grew long. I timed my schedule with Isabella's schedule. As soon as Isabella's car left on Thursdays, I pulled the old lawn mower out of the garage, mowed our lawn, and theirs. I was halfway through the Kohler's lawn when I heard, What are you doing there? Old Mr. Whitaker stood on the street, watching me. I'm trying to do something nice. Don't tell anyone, okay? I said. A secret good deed. We need more people doing that. Mr. Whitaker nodded and almost chuckled. Your secret's safe. Carry on. When Isabella drove home, she didn't notice the trimmed, ultra-green lawn right away and walked inside. A minute later, she opened the door and stared at the lawn. Her lawn was greener than anybody else's, trimmed neat, and I even edged it. Once again, she looked at the Whitaker house and smiled. Success. Summer semester started, and I made sure my schedule remained the same so I could mow lawns and secretly help out every Thursday morning. If my schedule changed, Isabella might get suspicious. On a Tuesday in mid-June, as I left to catch the bus for work, Isabella stood on her drive talking to Mrs. Clausen, the neighbor between our two houses. Do you know who's been mowing my lawn? It looks nice and I want to say thanks, Isabella asked. Maybe you have that short grass that never needs cutting. I wish I had that kind, Mrs. Clausen said. When she saw me, she smiled. I guess word is getting around. That Thursday, Isabella never left for work. Was she trying to catch me? I went outside and trimmed our lawn, waiting for her to leave. But she never did. She kept walking outside and looking at all our neighbors. 
She never suspected it was me. This was too rich. Friday, when she did go to work, it only took a few minutes to wheel the lawnmower out and trim her yard. I had to leave the lawn clippings in the lawnmower back because I had to run to my bus. Buses wait for no junior. When I walked home from the university, she was in the middle of the street talking to Mr. Whitaker. Mr. Whitaker, did you see who cut my lawn? She asked. Sorry, we were watching some game show. Didn't hear a thing, he said. Kyle, did you see? She asked me. Did I see what? I've had classes all morning, I said. Mr. Whitaker gave me a slight smile and a slight nod. He had seen me all right. My parents never knew what I did. They were both off to work when I had my little bit of fun. Did Stefan like the army? Did he like what he was doing, or what part of the world he was in? He should have finished basic training four months ago. Did he ever remember me as more than a geeky neighbor? Probably not. He would have met so many interesting people. Besides, I hadn't been a serious part of his life for years. Then why was I still mowing their lawn? Because it was fun doing something nice and not getting caught. I had my own secret identity. I also wanted to do something nice for Stefan and his mom. Well, for Stefan. I'd never see him again. In a couple of years when he came back, I'd have my degree, my own place, and never even know he had returned. I don't even have his phone number. In a way, I was saying goodbye. July came, and it's heat. I still covertly cut Isabella's lawn, though I had to have a quick shower afterward before catching my bus. I came home from school on an early July Wednesday. Hot, tired, sweaty, and a little grumpy. My sociology teacher had assigned a five-page research paper with a rough draft due in a week. The hard part? No internet sources allowed. How would she check? I guess it's busy work for her grad students. I'd spend a few minutes at the library, enough time to know I would need a couple of hours at the library this Saturday. My friends and I had plans to see the new superhero movie and then to go out to this new club. I know it was time to let Stefan go, but I liked helping him and his mom, especially since they never knew about it. I dreamed up the superhero, Lawn Cutter, the masked avenger who secretly rights the wrongs of untrimmed lawns. Isabella's car wasn't in the drive, which normally it was. If she was gone long enough, I could cut the lawns before I went to work and spend the extra time tomorrow morning at the library. I changed into shorts and a t-shirt, then made sure no one was around, and cut the Kohler's lawn first. I cleaned it up and started on ours. Isabella pulled into their drive as I was about halfway done with ours. She was talking on the phone and carried a grocery sack. She didn't notice me, or her yard. Perfect timing. I finished our yard and put the lawnmower away. A quick shower and I ran for the bus to get to work. Having a secret identity is fun. It had been a close one, though. She could have caught me. I should have waited until tomorrow. The new shipment of comics came into the store on Wednesdays, so I took home ten new magazines, including the new Insectoid title. They had a new title, a group book called The Bronze Legion, that boasted a gay character, so I bought that book to see how they handled LGBTQ issues. Besides, gay superheroes are pretty rare. It was 10.30 when I got off the bus and walked home. All the lights were on. Usually, Mom and Dad were in front of the TV in their bedroom, and the bedroom light was on. Not the whole house. There weren't any extra cars, so it couldn't be company, especially not this late. Why would they have all the lights on? Was somebody hurt? Was Dad starting one of his projects again, like painting all the interior walls? Or was Mom rearranging furniture for the third time this month? I really wasn't in the mood to lift anything heavy, not after work and taking care of two yards. So rather than entering through the front door, I snuck around to the side door and quietly let myself in. Are you sure this isn't a bother? Somebody said. A female voice I'd heard before. Don't worry. Kyle is usually home around this time, Mom said. Unless they have him doing some kind of cleanup duty. Remember that time when somebody was sick in one of the bathrooms, Dad said? He didn't get home until midnight, Mom said. They did pay him overtime, which he wasted at that comic book store. 
Our schedules are so different, so it's hard to talk to him. But I really need to, the voice said. Isabella Kohler? Stefan's mom? What would she be doing here? I grabbed some juice and a couple slices of old pizza from the fridge. Which one of my neighbors outed my secret identity? Kyle, is that you? Mom said. Yes, Mom. Just getting something to eat, I said. Can you come here for a minute? We have company and something we want to ask you, Dad said. Give me a minute, I said. Seven months of either shoveling snow or cutting lawns. I should have expected this. Isabella and my parents would have learned soon enough. Time for the lawn cutter to be unmasked. I carried my food and drink into the living room. I was right. Not only were Mom and Dad there, but Isabella as well. Hey, what's up? How's Stefan? I asked. A shadow of a frown flashed across Mom's face and was gone. Have you been doing nice things over at Stefan's place? Mom asked. Her voice became a little bit shrill. I shrugged and took a big bite of cold pizza. Little things have been happening since Stefan left. I thought it was the Whitakers, and I went over with a plate of cookies to say thanks, but they let it slip that it wasn't them, Isabella said. What did you do next? Dad said. I checked with all the other neighbors. Nobody did it. I had a feeling everybody knew who, but nobody wanted to say. Every Thursday morning, as soon as I left for work, somebody mowed my lawn or fixed my mailbox or dropped off treats. I tried to catch them, but whoever it was was too smart. I told Stefan, but he thought it sounded like the Whitakers too, and they were being modest, Isabella said. Did you ever figure out who it was? I said, taking another bite of pizza to keep from smiling. I bought a camera and set it to record when it sensed motion. I got the Nelson's cat, a lot of cars, and this. Isabella held out her phone, hit play, and it showed me in back of a lawnmower quickly neatening up their place. I had to laugh. Oops, I got caught. Dad smiled. I can't believe you did this for months and nobody told us. This is the first we heard about it, Mom said, carefully tapping her finger on the armrest. Dad was smiling. Isabella was smiling. Mom wasn't. I think every one of our neighbors knew about this, but it was a conspiracy of silence, Isabella said. How did you get everybody to keep it secret? I shrugged again and took another bite. I asked them to. I want to say thank you. It was tough seeing Stefan go, but your little surprise made it easier, Isabella said. You won't ever know how much it meant to me. It was my pleasure. Does this mean you want me to stop? I asked. No, I only wanted to know who it was. I'll pay you if you want. Stefan used to mow the lawns and take care of the place, she said. I'm not doing it for money, so I don't want any, I said. Isabella frowned a little. Why are you doing it? I'm trying to be nice, I said. Dad nodded. My folks knew I was gay. I think he had figured out why I did it. Mom had a slight downturn to her lips. Stefan had probably told his mom that I had come out to him, and I loved him, so she probably knew as well. I'm really bad about this secret identity stuff. Isabella adjusted her phone and dialed. It's early over there, but we can always leave a message. It rang a couple of times. Who are you calling? I asked. Isabella held up her finger a moment. I know you have a million things going on, so I'll be quick. That's okay, said a man's voice. I'm finishing breakfast. I found out who's been mowing the lawn and doing all the nice things, Isabella said. It's not who we thought. I can't believe you did all this and didn't tell anyone, Mom whispered. No one was supposed to know, I said. Kyle, can you come here? Isabella said. She held her phone out. Vid chat. Stefan was on the other end. I didn't know what to say. My hands started to sweat and my throat tightened up. It felt like I had been called into the principal's office. Kyle, you did all that? For eight months? Seriously? It was you? Stefan said, his face easing into a smile. Isabella handed me the phone. Surprise, I said. I can't believe it, Stefan said, eyes widening. I shrugged. No one was supposed to know, but your mom bought a camera. Where are you? Army base in Germany. They sent me here right after basic, Stefan said. Is it exciting, I asked. In its own way. I have to go, but thanks for taking care of mom. 
When I get back to the States, I'll take you out to dinner, he said. You're on, I said. Let me give you my number and we can talk later, Stefan said, then rattled off his phone number. I repeated it and Dad wrote it down. Here's mine, I said, hoping the barriers had broken down a little between us, but the odds of us ever talking again were pretty slim. This was only a courtesy exchange. I've got to go, or I'll be late. Your bedtime is my breakfast, Stefan said. I handed the phone back to his mom, and she said, Bye, I'll talk to you this weekend, and hung up. Dad handed me the phone number, and Isabella stood up. I know it's late, but I had to say thank you. I want to pay you because you've done a lot of work. It's not a very big lawn, I said. Don't worry about it. Then I'll help buy gas for the lawnmower. I didn't do this for money, and you were never supposed to find out, I said. I think it's sweet you helped me like that. Thank you, but I'm still buying gas for your mower, she said. Once she left, Mom folded her arms and laid into me. That was nice of you, but does Stefan realize you still love him? Is that fair to him? He went his way, I went mine. We're barely friends, I said. There's no chance for romance. You need to face reality. Stefan will be gone for two years, at least. You'll be a different person when he comes back. He'll be a different person, Mom said. It's time you gave up fantasizing about him, gave up comics, and focused on college. Do you know how much money you are wasting on those magazines? Kyle likes comics, and he pays for them himself. What's the big deal? Dad said. Lighten up. Kyle's teen years were pretty rough, but he turned out all right. Is there any more of that pizza? I'm starving. Mom only shook her head. I went to my room and cleared a space on my old magnetic noteboard that I had made in shop back in middle school. I found a couple of heart magnets and attached Stefan's phone number right in the middle of the noteboard. For good measure, I added a rainbow. That number went straight into my phone. He'd never call me, but would I have the courage to call him? I went to bed staring at our picture on the day he left for boot camp. If life had been different. Since I had mowed the lawns last night, I had extra time Thursday morning to head to the library. My phone rang while I was on the bus. Stefan's number? That's impossible. It opened into a video chat with Stefan, smiling, his hair buzzed short. Now I can talk. I couldn't really this morning, he said. You really did all that for Mom. I shrugged. It was only a little bit of snow, and you don't have a big lawn. I know what those snowstorms can be like, so thanks for helping Mom, Stefan said. How do you like Germany? I asked. It's fun. I thought taking three years of German in high school made me pretty good. My first week here, I learned how much I needed to know. Can I ask you a question? It will sound weird, but don't take it wrong, he said. Sure, I've got twenty minutes until my stop, I said. Why did you do it? He said. Just being nice, I said, though it was a lot more than that. We used to be really good friends, Stefan said. Until I told you I was gay and I loved you, I said. Some of the old bitterness came out in my voice. I didn't handle that very well, did I? Stefan said. It's my fault. I kind of blindsided you with it. Why did I secretly help your mom out? Old times sake, I guess, I said. We had some good times once. Remember that movie about that disgusting alien? Stefan said. You mean the one that made the guy throw up behind us? I said. I don't know what he had eaten, but he cleared out the theater, Stefan said. I'm sorry things changed between us, I said. It's not your fault, but mine, Stefan said, taking a deep breath. We are getting too serious for a bus ride. Tell me about Germany, I said. We talked for the next twenty minutes until my stop arrived. If I was going to ask, now would be the only time. Can I call you tomorrow? That's Friday morning for us. I don't know what day it is for you. Same time, I asked. It's nice to talk to somebody from home, Stefan said. I'll be waiting. Just remember, your breakfast time is my dinner time. And my bedtime today is your breakfast tomorrow, I said. I got off the bus and couldn't stop grinning. I thought about Stefan and all my classes, and work. 
Isabella must have been watching for me, because I got home at eleven, and she brought over cookies and a spare tank of gas for the mower. I don't know how often you and Stefan will call each other, but calling Germany can be pretty expensive. My carrier has an unlimited plan for international calls, for an extra fee. Look into it. Mom heard that, and a disapproving scowl flashed through her eyes and mouth. I called Stefan the next day, and he called me the next, and we talked about everything, just like we had before I came out. Maybe it was because he was almost 5,000 miles away and was lonely, but it was nice to talk to him. At first, we spoke every few days. Then it became every day, except Thursday. That's the day I mowed our lawns. I loved talking to Stefan. It was like back in high school, back before I had told him I loved him. I guess it was an unwritten agreement. We didn't talk about that, but we talked about everything else. For two months, I had my best friend back. On the second Wednesday in September, Stefan called. As usual, I was on the bus heading for college. Stefan hesitated a moment before speaking. I've put in leave to come home for Christmas. The base commander has to sign off on it, and a lot of people with more seniority have already requested it, so I probably won't get it. If you can't make it, we can still vid chat. We'll still have Christmas together, I said. The line went quiet. When Stefan spoke, his voice seemed to shake, and it deepened a little. Your mom called me yesterday. Something in his tone spoke of bad news. I swallowed and clutched my phone a little tighter. She told me that you were still in love with me, and I needed to remind you how things are. She wants me to dump you because it's better for both of us, Stefan said. Mom called you, I asked, a little angry and not believing what I was hearing. I don't know where she found the number. Listen, I'm sorry. She said you needed to face reality, like, I'm straight and you're gay. She thinks that if I don't say something, you'll follow me everywhere and miss a chance of finding somebody. Look, the truth is, I'm seeing someone. The pain hit me like a knife in the heart. I don't know how I held on to the phone. I wanted to cry. I wanted to scream. I wish I was someplace alone. I wish I wasn't on vid chat. What do I say? A tear fell. I wiped it away. Was I getting emotional because Mom had betrayed me? Or because Stefan was seeing somebody? Hello? Stefan said. Suck it up, Kyle. Stefan needs a friend. Not a jilted boyfriend who had no chance of being a boyfriend. That's great, I said, forcing a little enthusiasm in my voice. What's her name? Madalena, Stefan said. She's German and likes dating an American. I've been seeing her for a couple of weeks now. It was like a brick was stuck in my throat. That's great, I somehow mumbled. I'm repeating myself because I don't know what to say. I fell back on the old cliché. I'm happy for you. There was a long pause. I know you love me, but I, I, I can't. I mean, I only want us to be friends. I don't want this to change that because, well, I care for you, but not like that. I understand, I said, but didn't really. A second tear fell and I quickly wiped it away. Stefan's eyes flickered as he followed my hand. You can be mad at me if you want. Stefan was a straight guy whose best friend fell in love with him. It had hurt years ago when he had avoided me, and it hurt just as much now. I was a fool for even pretending that we could have been more. Say something, Stefan quietly said. Kyle, you're still my friend. My, 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 my stop's coming up. I'll talk to you later, I sputtered, through the violent ache in my chest. Wait, I'm not. I ended the call as another tear fell. I had lied. My stop wasn't coming up for another ten minutes. I am a complete, idiotic, stupid dumbo of a fool who couldn't face reality. Was that why Mom had called Stefan? It hurt too much to think. I went to my classes but couldn't pay attention to anything. 
I didn't want to see my parents, especially my mom. Instead of going home before work, I hung out at a coffee shop, then went straight to work. For the first time since I had started work at the mall, I didn't go to the comic book store. Call me a zombie because that's how I did my job. It had always been a one-sided relationship. I loved Stefan. Stefan was straight. Stefan didn't love me. The curse of the gay best friend. I should have realized that sooner or later, Stefan would move on. I was just a childhood friend that had hung on too long. Stefan's friends had turned into the guys on the sports teams, and now his army buddies. Stefan had his own life. But my mom had called Stefan. She destroyed our friendship. I stayed late at work, caught the late bus, and didn't get home until midnight. My parents were asleep, so I didn't have to see them, and they left for work early, so there was only time for a mumbled good morning. Have a nice day. I still cut Isabella's lawn like normal, though I did it like I was in a coma. It did give me time to think. It was time to let Stefan have his own life. Maybe it was time for me as well. Usually, I called Stefan on my way to work. Did he even want to hear from me? Did I want to hear from him? Would it even be appropriate to call him, even as a friend? Could I call him to see if it was okay to call him? Was helping his mom still acceptable? Would I be seen as being a stalker? What was I? I was hurting. What had I expected? I still had a crush on him even after all these years. I didn't call Stefan on Thursday, and he didn't call me. I also didn't go home until very late, and I caught an earlier bus so I didn't have to see my parents Friday morning. I also looked at apartment listings. Friday afternoon, I called my friends to see if any of them wanted to share an apartment. One friend said yes. When I got home from work at 11, Mom waited for me in the kitchen. I walked past Mom and didn't even say hello. I want to talk to you, she said. After what you did, I don't want to talk to you, I said back. I only said what you know should have been said, she said. I was only thinking of you. Maybe you should have thought about staying out of my life before you ruined it, I yelled and walked away. Get back here, she yelled. I went to my room, hands shaking a little. Mom followed. You know I was right. What kind of a relationship can you have with Stefan? I pulled out an old backpack and stuffed it with clothes. One day you will understand that I was right, Mom yelled. I filled my current backpack with my laptop, chargers, and everything I needed for my classes. It's about time you left your comic book world and grew up. Since you have all that money to throw away on comics, it's about time to pay us rent. No more free loading, Mom yelled. I picked up both backpacks, made sure I had my phone and everything else, and left my room. I went back and checked the note board. I took Stefan's phone number and stuffed it in my pocket. What do you think you're doing? Stand still and listen to me, Mom screamed. I went into the bathroom and grabbed my toothbrush, toothpaste, my razor, and a towel. Stefan won't like a comic book geek like you. If he even liked you, then you would still be friends. I went into the kitchen and grabbed a couple slices of pizza for the road. Mom, we were friends until you called him. You were not friends, and I'm glad I ended that friendship before you fell in love and did nothing with your life, Mom screamed. You both need to settle down before you say something you'll regret, Dad said as he came into the kitchen. I already regret what Mom said. I went to the door and walked away from my house, my parents, my comics, my life. Where do you think you're going? Get back here, Mom yelled from the doorway. I kept walking. You can't leave, Mom screamed, running after me. We're a family. We were a family. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Dad. I'm not coming back, I yelled. Where will you go, Dad asked. To face reality, I yelled. Both of you, leave me alone. You'll be back. You can't survive without us, Mom screamed. I kept walking. Mr. Whitaker stood on his porch, watching us. Isabella stood on hers, 
holding her phone, her hand covering her mouth. I think you better tell me what you did to make Kyle so mad, Dad said as I walked away. I caught the late bus and went to the university library. It stayed open all night because a lot of students could make it any other time. I stayed Friday night and called my boss, Saturday morning, to see if I could come in and work extra hours. Nice guy. He said yes and didn't ask any questions. Every so often, my dad or my mom would call. I ignored those. How can a person hurt so much? I didn't have a home. I lost my best friend. Again. And I couldn't bring myself to tell my friends. My mom had betrayed me. I'd live in the library for a while. My boss was nice enough to let me work eight hours that day. He only said, if you need to talk, I'm here. Sunday, boss let me work 10 hours. Every hour my phone rang, either dad or mom. I blocked both of them. Whatever happened, I would not go back. I washed my clothes in one of the library restrooms and ate at the student center. I was alone with the ache. It hurt so much, I couldn't tell anyone. Monday morning, I walked to the student center to get coffee and something to eat. I had my college notebook out and was drawing little hearts and scribbling them out. Besides the library and the student center, the only other place that was open all the time was the church. My parents went to church every week. I never went, and they stopped bugging me about it years ago. Mom liked to go every day, so going to church wasn't an option, because I'd have to face my mom. I didn't want to see her again. My phone rang. It was in vid chat, and I was at home. It was Stefan's mom, Isabella. I picked it up. Your mom came by looking for you, but I saw you leave. I heard what happened. Do you need a place to stay until you find a place of your own? Stefan's old room is available, she said. Did mom put you up to this, I asked. She doesn't even know I'm calling, she said. It wouldn't be appropriate, I whispered. Because you love my son? I know all about that too. How? Another time. Where are you? I'll come get you. I told her, and thirty minutes later she pulled up to the student center parking lot. I climbed in, and, after visiting a drive through for breakfast, we went to Stefan's home. You don't have to worry about me telling anybody you're here. Take the time to get your head together, she said. I'll pay rent or something, I said. She smiled and patted my cheek. I still owe you for all the times you cut my lawn. I figure that's easily worth a few weeks' rent. I need to get groceries. You need to get cleaned up. Do you want anything? I shook my head, and she left. I showered, changed into something clean, and laid on Stefan's bed. The room had less posters than it had back in high school, a few more trophies, and a giant army poster. Who would have ever thought I'd be back in this room? The last few days had been too stressful, too hard. Being in Stefan's room only reminded me of what he had said. It hurt, and wouldn't stop hurting. No one was around, so I lay there and endured the ache. The doorbell woke me. I'd slept for two hours, and Isabella hadn't come home yet. I pried myself off the bed and went to the front door. I was ready to slam it shut if it was my parents. A yawning florist stood there with an electronic clipboard, and he held a large vase with so many bright yellow and gold and orange blooms, I don't think I could put my arms around them. I opened the door a few inches. I'm looking for a guy named Kyle Delt. These are for him, the florist said. That's me, I said. Who are they from? He glanced at the clipboard. S. Kohler from Germany. Sign here, please. I'd only just arrived at Stefan's place. How would he know? But it was from Germany? From Stefan? My vision blurred with tears and my face felt warm. Some kind of emotion that was a cross between fear and terror and just a tiny bit of hope filled my chest. That's the kind of reaction that makes my day. Somebody must love you, the florist said. 
I signed and took the flowers into the dining room and set them on the dining room table. They had a card. I miss talking to you. Call me. I'm sorry. Stefan still wanted to talk to me? Should I call him? Could I call him? I picked up my phone and stared at the screen. Could I handle being just friends? He already knew I loved him, his mom too. But that's as far as it could go. The curse of the gay best friend. Any conversation would start off weird, but it would be a conversation. I dialed. Stefan picked up on the second ring. Hi, Kyle, Stefan said, his voice wavering. I got your flowers. They were beautiful, I said, and started to cry. How did you know where I was? Mom called me. Four days of not talking to you made me crazy, too. I've had a lot of time to think. The truth is, before you even told me you were gay, I wondered what it would be like to kiss you. It scared me. Then you told me you were gay, and it really scared me, because I wondered if I was too. I guess that's why I avoided you, because I didn't want to accept how I felt. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about what I said. Sorry for being a jerk all these years. I'm sorry for a lot of things. It's okay, I said. I told Madalena what had happened, and she said I needed a friend on both continents. I told Mom about your mom calling me and what she said, and how I screwed everything up. Mom told me how you got so mad at your parents you left. Nobody has been able to find you for days. Mom said she'd find you somehow. She called me this morning and is letting me stay in your old room, I said. Stefan's face screwed up, and he wiped away tears. Maybe... Maybe I do like you like that. I think I always have. We talked for an hour until Stefan had to sign off to meet Madalena. It was Monday night over there. I took the flowers to my room and stared at the picture of Stefan and me from January, the day he had to report for basic training. Isabella returned with groceries, and as she was setting them on the kitchen counter, I took one of the flowers over to her. Her eyes red. She hugged me and said, I had a feeling about the two of you. I don't know what's going to happen, but I really like talking to Stefan, I said. Stefan explained everything, and he called every day for the last few days to see if I had heard anything. He was afraid to call you. He thought you'd block him or something. I was afraid to call him too, I whispered. I still love him. I think we all know that. She hugged me and tore off a paper towel so I could wipe my eyes. She said, Something you need to know, and I've already told Stefan and he understands and agrees. This place isn't a permanent solution for you. Only a few weeks at best. I'm putting the house up for sale. It's too big for one person. When are you moving? I asked. I talked to the realtor, and he wants to bring people later this week. I don't want to impose but I need the yard looking better than ever, and I'll need help packing everything up. The price of short-term rent, I said. A little while later, I was sitting on Stefan's bed, in kind of a stupor. Everything had happened too fast for me to process. My phone rang. Stefan. I picked up as close to the first ring as I could. It was early evening in Germany. He was walking along the street with cafes and bars on each side. I wanted you to meet my friend, Madalena, Stefan said, holding his phone to show both him and a dark-haired girl. She said something, smiling like she was flirting. Stefan blushed. What did she say? I said. Don't you worry. Your friend Madalena will protect your cute boyfriend, Stefan translated. She giggled, leaned forward, and kissed the phone screen. Americans are so cute, she said with a thick German accent. Within two weeks, Isabella sold their place, and I found an apartment about halfway between the mall and the university. The following Sunday, I borrowed a small truck from my friend's dad, brought all my friends, and while my parents were at church, I moved all my stuff out. Mr. Whitaker and his wife came out, carrying a plate of cookies. 
You take care. Come by and let us know how you're doing. I hope you and Stefan can make it work. While I gave them a hug, my parents drove up. Thank goodness the truck was already full. I climbed into the truck and started it. My folks walked over. My dad said, moving out? I've spent a lot of money on my collection. I don't want you to throw it away before I can sell everything, I said. You found a place? My dad asked. I did, I said. Do you need some help moving in? My dad asked. No, it's already taken care of. Can we have your address so we can come visit? Dad asked. No, I think it's better we stay separated for a while, I said. You didn't even think this through. How can you afford an apartment and college? Mom sneered. I'm only taking one more semester before I change schools. I'm changing majors to German. German? What happened to sociology? Mom asked. I've made some changes, I said. Will you answer our phone calls? Dad asked. No. But we're a family, Mom yelled. Yes, we were. You broke it, so I'm making a new one, I said. Don't be a brat. You're overreacting. You know I did the right thing, Mom said. By now you should thank me because you and Stefan will never work out. You are too different. And here I was going to invite you to our wedding, I said, smiling. You and Stefan are getting married, Dad said. He air freighted me a ring made in Germany, and it has our names written on the inside. Stefan and Kyle Kohler, I said, and held my hand up to show off the ring. You're taking his name, Dad said. I am. After the way Mom treated us, it wouldn't be appropriate to keep the old name, I said. How can you love him when you can't even see him, Mom yelled. Dad turned to her and loudly whispered, We have talked about this. You have pushed our son out of the family. If you want any chance of a reconciliation, then keep your tongue civil. When is the lucky day for you and Stefan? Mom said, sweetly. Stefan's already found a furnished apartment, and he'll be here in February for our service. The day after our ceremony, I'm going to Germany to live with my husband, I said, and drove off. Stefan and I would discover what it meant to be husband and husband, together. I had the strangest feeling, something I don't think I felt before. I was free and had the entire future open before me. Thanks for listening, friends. Peace.